about the only one that weren't not here. Uh, but you could go online, and all of it's on the server. So uh, anything that's uh, uh, since today, anything that went wrong, Mr. Harrison's fault. Amen. So, so. <laughs> all right. No, anyways, uh, so I think it was a good uh, uh, time, and so uh, very, you know, um, very serious time, amen, and uh, we know that we uh, try to make, we want to try to have fun, but sometimes you need to have serious times, and today was one of those, and so I believe that God was, uh, uh, you know, glad for what we were experiencing, and so, so just, I'm just saying that to you because um, I'm looking for greater times in service, amen. And I'm uh, looking to see what God would have for us in the future. So don't forget this coming weekend will be uh, the um, mystery box uh, ministry. So that's going to come. And if you have never, uh, if you don't know what that's about and you would like to know, you can come here Thursday. I think it was at 630 that you can come here and and uh, we'll explain everything to you. But want to be able to the River Fest is this coming weekend. And we'll be able to try to reach those people there with the gospel, right? So I just got brand new uh, tracks in, so not enough to where we could uh, get to every individual uh, that weekend. So just, you know, Friday, Saturday, and portion of Sunday, all right? And so tonight, um, I would uh, say to you, turn the Bible, but I don't know what the message is. So I've asked Nathan to come and uh, to be able to uh, open up the Word of God with us tonight. And uh, so I've been looking forward for this. Uh, this is a new realm uh, for Nathan. Uh, so just uh, just pray that God will continue uh, using him and that God may fulfill his desire, right? His desire is to have 10 kids, man. And uh, so... Uh, <laughs> Boy, Nathan's like, well, where did that come from? So, anyways, uh, so uh, so we like to invite Nathan over uh, sometimes just for afternoon lunch, and the kids all rally him up and stuff, and uh, say, Nathan, you ready to have one? So, man, I don't know, man. <laughs> anyways, uh, but uh, he needs about five Jarrets, amen? And uh, so that'll, that'll get him going, amen? <laughs> anyways, uh, so Nathan, you come and open up the Word of God, and so keep Nathan in prayer. And I don't know what the message is either. I was waiting for him to show me and write it for me, but he didn't do it. So last minute I had to know. I'm just kidding. Uh, I've had something on my on my heart and mind for a little while that uh, I'm going to share with you. And uh, first of all, I brought this up just to remind me to thank you guys for uh, the support to my family and my myself in this time that we lost my stepdad. Um, I want to thank the church for the, their well wishes and their, and their support. You know, my mom came up here, and uh, that hadn't happened yet. It's, it's, it's uh, curious how it happened that she was here just a few days before that happened, but she uh, was encouraged anyways by just by uh, you guys in that time and then conveying, okay, I know who that person is. I know who that person is, saying, Mom, that they wished you well. Um, so she appreciated that, and I think everything – in the memorial service went well and I think God just blessed and just keep praying for her in her, in her living situation now uh, we've got options but we're just trying to figure out which one is the best way to go but thank you all for that um, on that note we're going to turn to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 9 and this is a, a real nice truth that I'm glad I've learned in my life we had a pastor in Bible college, Dr. Nick Crow, preach this. And ever since then, it's always just been something that I've loved to remember, and I've tried to live it out and express it. And uh, I think it's just a, a great story and a great truth for us to hear tonight. Second Samuel, now I turned this up to adjust for my uh, lack of projection, I guess you'll say. But... Uh, Chapter 9, 2 Samuel chapter 9, we'll begin at reading at verse 1. And the Bible says, And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul 
that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake. Then there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son, which is lame on his feet. <coughs> and the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amuel, in Lodabar. Then king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amuel, from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold, thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will show, surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, what is thy servant that thou should, shouldest look on him upon such a dog as I am? Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and to his house. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shalt till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then said Ziba unto the king, According to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. And all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table and was lame on both his feet. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, just thank you for this time that we have together, Lord. And I just pray that you help, Lord, just my thoughts to be in the, in the right direction, Lord, as to what I need to say and express this truth, Lord. And may it just be an encouragement to myself and to all of us that are here. And, Lord, may we honor and glorify you, Lord. May I be able to step aside and let your word and your spirit speak through me, Lord, and just pray for that. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the reason I think of this is because of my stepdad. Uh, Miss Kathy, I can't think of her last name that sits right there. Spears. That uh, she came to my stepfather's memorial. And I think that's a, a really neat thing that I meant to mention. I spoke at the memorial about these things that I'm saying now. And I meant to mention that there, but I forgot to. I, I was trying to be short, preach only for five minutes, you know, instead of taking up the whole time because the other pastor was going to preach. So I forgot to say this, but she drove three and a half, not three and a half, three hours. And in my mind, maybe she did it for my sake to support me, but I really was thinking the friendship that she formed with my mom in just five minutes the time she came, I'm thinking she did that to support my mom too. She drove three hours to be there for my mom. And that to me was a very remarkable thing to do. And I thought that was worthy of, of sharing with you and, and I wanted to share with the other uh, people at that service that that is a sign of friendship and support that someone would do that because then she's got to drive three hours back. And I did that drive in one day there and back, but I'm her son. And this is just someone who wanting to be a support to, to somebody like that, I thought that was pretty uh, uh, remarkable. Again, I, I want to use a lot of other words, but um, just a very kind thing to do. And I appreciated that. And that has a lot to do with what I'm saying. But now my stepfather, <laughs> and I don't want to speak um, inappropriately, but he was a very proud man. 
And if you didn't see things eye to eye with him, he was going to try to make you see his point of view. And he did it to a point where, I, I say this all the time, and I'm getting feedback and stuff if we can, uh, where every man has that naturally to be right and somebody, you know, you're going to see it from my point of view. But eventually we grow up to where we don't always have to be angry that you don't agree with me. And he didn't always have that. He would become very angry if you didn't agree with him on the littlest thing. Uh, when my grandmother passed away, I was going 20 miles through town, thought I was going slow enough to find the funeral home. We passed it, and boy, that was just a life lesson that I needed to learn because I wasn't going slow enough that he thought I should have been. So we missed the, the turn. We just had to go down the street, turn around, and find it again. But he made a big deal out of that because I wasn't listening to him. So those are the kinds of things. Uh, I learned from him what not to do. Um, and, I'm not, and I'm trying not to be disrespectful, but I want to make the point that my brother and I were living in the same apartment at the same time that my mom married him. And he helped me realize that there's different degrees in problems. I shouldn't get as mad at you for leaving the milk carton a little too loose than if you really did something serious. And I can't even think of an example, like you did something on purpose to hurt me uh, spitefully. I shouldn't have the same amount of anger over both of them, but he would. And, he would, and, and it was hard to even care what he thought because of that. Well, it's just another problem that you have. How do I know this is even important? Of course, you could tell this isn't worth getting that mad over. So when I, my mother was here, we mentioned the prayer request was for the marriage because she had been living in that for 11 years. And it was getting to the point where she just, it was a verbal, it was becoming verbal abuse that she just couldn't do anything right. So I still believe that by his testimony, he said that he was saved. He just didn't have a lot of self-control. And so I don't say this to disrespect him, but anybody who knew him would probably be shuff, uh, jumping up and down and saying amen right now because they knew that was one of his most defining traits was how impatient he was with other people's imperfections. I say all of that because with Mephibosheth, God, David showed kindness unto him for Saul's sake, for Jonathan's sake. So God put it on my heart that if my mom should pass away before Larry did, I know that all my family would be very happy to wash their hands of him. But God put it on my heart that I should not be willing to throw that away. I should, for my mom's sake, show kindness to him and be there to have still some sort of relationship with him because of the love my mom had for him. And God, God, mom always told me that God gave a love for him through all of those things. And we all didn't understand that, but we believed, you know, God gave her a love for him through all of that. But uh, I really had that as a conviction in my heart that I wanted that to happen. For my heart to be that, that I would be willing to do that. Um, Everybody else would be just content. And he was 74 years old. Um, who knows what was going to happen if he was going to end up needing to be in a home and all that kind of stuff. Who knows? A lot of uh, health issues and mobility issues. So um, just to portray that truth, the first thing that I want to say, and the whole point is showing kindness to each other. But the first point is, before I get all my stuff all out of order here, is that the, the message would be called the kindness of God. And the first point is that originates with love for God. Now that in itself is an important point when we consider who Saul was to David. Saul made himself a physical, life-threatening enemy to David. But David still loved Saul. 
for who he was before he became that. He was a good king, and he loved David at first as well. And for that sake, he continued loving Saul. And for the sake of the fact that God still had him in that position, he still loved Saul. And we know the stories. It's interesting, just these last two weeks, um, I'm trying to get in some Bible reading. What I would do is I got an audio Bible on my phone as I would be listening to that on the way to work. And when I was alone, I'll still have it playing uh, when I'm getting ready to open the store. And I was going through 1 Samuel, talking about David and Saul. And then we come to this message tonight. What Saul was was not a friend to David at the end. He was an absolute enemy to David, but David still loved him. And then we look at Jonathan, and, and it was for both of their sakes, for Saul's sake and for Jonathan's sake, that he would show kindness unto Mephibosheth. And I think it's funny, I had trouble uh, pronouncing the names Makar and Amuel, but I can say Mephibosheth without a problem. But... For their sakes, he showed kindness unto this one that apparently he had never met or didn't even know about. And our love for each other needs to originate for our love for God. And show kindness to each other for God's sake and for Christ's sake loving each other. We look at, we look at Saul, we look at uh, his relationship with Jonathan, which was not the same as with Saul. Jonathan... The Bible says that God knit their souls together, which is, is a strong relationship where they just, their hearts were in beat with each other. Their minds were together. They loved each other in the Lord. And it was for that sake. So we can look at that and say, he showed kindness unto Mephibosheth for an enemy's sake that he loved and for a really very good friend. And so all of that, we can love our enemies as well as our friends. And that's something for us to understand as well. But for the sake of both of them, an enemy and a friend, he showed kindness unto Mephibosheth. And we consider that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And we understand and we can pull out a lot of verses that just show that Jesus was willing to die for us because God so loved the world. And so God loved us, and so for his sake, Christ died for us, and he died for our sake. But we just see that, that the love that God has for us, we need to have with each other. And as we love God, we need to love each other. And Mephibosheth was lame on his feet. And so the first thought is love the kindness of God originates with love for God. I can love you because I love God. Then the second thing is love and kindness overlooks flaws. And now here's an important uh, lesson in my family, but in this world as well, that even if somebody wrongs you, you do not have to hate that person. You do not have to seek to correct or destroy that person to the point where you're belittling them and tearing them down because they did something wrong. The love of God is far greater than that. If, what would, would vindictive be a good word for that? When someone's done you wrong and you're just out to get them? Now, when I was younger, I've done things like that. You just, you'd be persistent with it and you'd be creative with it just to get that person back. Because, boy, that was in your heart and it was festering. But when you grow up, some of that should probably fall away that you know that's not a good thing to do. I may still be annoyed or inconvenienced or upset with what you did, but that doesn't have to define our relationship. And I think maybe Larry taught me that too, that he had a lot that could cause somebody to dislike him. And it was said that if anybody ever physically attacked Larry, that the police in our town would defend the person who attacked him because they knew he was such an antagonist. That was actually said. So 
But having that, I still wanted, by the grace of God and the wisdom that God could give, to not let that define my relationship with Larry for my mom's sake. My mom loves him. Maybe I can learn to love and overlook those things too. And so that's the whole reason I'm thinking in this direction is because this is going on uh, presently in my life with my stepfather. But I want to convey this to you that we can overlook flaws. And that was a big flaw in him that defined him. Everybody in the family was fine with my mother leaving him for her sake. <laughs> we didn't want to think that the rest of her life she was going to go through every day being belittled and yelled at for the littlest mistakes that she made. Just as much as we didn't want to think of her being physically abused, we didn't want her to be always upset and belittled. And so I don't know what the biblical answer to that is. I, don't, I think that if, you know, I don't think the Bible makes clear that, you know, physical abuse is grounds for divorce, but I wouldn't say that it was wrong for someone to leave someone that's physically abusing them, but then to verbally as well. We were very much for my mother getting out of that situation all of that to say she was still willing to overlook that and be patient with him God was putting it on my heart to still try to see the good in him try to love him try to have a relationship with him that was more than just that and with all that maybe none of us are as but we still need to look at each other and say I love that person and I'm willing to overlook their flaws. They <laughs> most, most stuff that is a miscommunication between us, a lot of it was an accident by that person. They didn't understand what they were doing. They did something that was, was offensive, it, it was hurtful to us. They didn't necessarily mean for that to happen. But even if they did, even if they were angry with us and they struck out at us, I think it's still wise and God's love should play out in our lives that we're willing to say there's still more to that person than just that one thing that they did. And I can still say, you know, Brother Jesse, I could still love Jesse even though maybe he did something like that to me. Because there's more to him than that. There's a friendship that we have. And, and that's what I'm trying to say. There's a history. There's a friendship that we can't just throw that away because of one thing. We need to have the kindness that overlooks those things. And if it's a continual thing, so one thing it's on accident, one thing maybe it is on purpose and they really knew what they were doing. Or maybe it's a continual thing. We still need to love that person because we've seen who they truly are. And I know in my mind, I'm knowing there's an example that of somebody that God has shown me that to love them who they are, I think other than Larry, but it's not coming to me. Um, maybe with my aunts. My aunts are always getting offended at each other. And I think I've said this before, you know, stuff that was said 30 years ago is still in their Rolodex of, of offenses that they still are hung up on. And then this person said this in response to that. And then they said this in response to that. And then they said this in response to that. And it just keeps going for 30 years. And now you don't even, you just got a mess. Instead of saying, that's my sister. That's my brother. And there should be more of a relationship than just those petty little problems. But if we loved God the way we should, we would be able to see that with each other, that this thing that we might have between us, there's more to you and who you are and the history that we have and the friendship that we should have more than in the love that God has for all of us as a church, as a family, as friends, than just this one thing. And for that sake, I can say, this isn't all that there is to Jesse Shackelford. I don't need to just turn around and say, I'm never going to talk to him again. Let's try to get that right for the sake of that relationship that we can have or have had. And I believe God wants that to be the case in our lives. To overlook flaws, that's not all there is to that person. That's somebody God loves. That's somebody that probably, just like you, is trying their best is trying to figure out their way in this world, is trying to figure out what to do. Uh, social interactions are very often, they're hard for us to always understand. 
how the other person's perceiving us, even as adults, no matter how old we get. We're still, there's, there's still lots of room for misunderstandings. Get past all that stuff. There may be misunderstandings. There's more to Jesse than just that. And, and he's a good man. He's, you know, he's a good preacher. And, and, you know, if I knew him any better, I could list more and more things, you know. You know, I, I could go on and on and on with all the bad things about Pastor Boyce. No, I'm just kidding. But I, <laughs> I think you'll hear that in about 30 seconds. It'll probably look up. That's funny. Because the 30 seconds delay from, from here to the stream. But, uh. Uh, there's more to these people than just that flaw and so why not for the love that God has showed us and for the relationship that we have had or could have be willing to just put it in its proper place it wasn't that big of a deal it's unfortunate that it happened but I still love that person let's put it behind us now I'm not married as a deacon that's one thing that I would desire and I was going to tease and, you know, go out here and say, you know, describe what I'm looking for and all that. But I'm just, you know, that would just be in jest. But I'm not married because I haven't found anybody in my very small social life that I have, which is a lot of me because I'm pretty content to go home and chill out. Um, forgot what I was going when I said that, but, uh, well, I'm not married. That's what I was saying. I'm not married, but I do understand that if I were I've always, I've always said this, and God's helped me understand this without ever having a wife, that if a woman puts up with a smelly, inconsiderate, rude, just like a bull in a china shop kind of man, which we are, we're fumbly and all that stuff. If a woman puts up with a man, she needs to be, deserves to be treated like a queen if she's putting up with all that stuff. And so... Also, and I've seen some pastors that are very impatient with their wives. And I, I just, I could understand, okay, you know, being impatient with someone. But you ought to have enough wisdom to say, I love her more than that. To not treat her like she's dumb. To not treat her like she's just doing stuff on purpose. Or she should be getting this and she doesn't. I don't, I've never experienced it. But I just can't see there being a lot of room when you love somebody, to just treat them like they're dumb. For not seeing it from your point of view. That's awfully proud of you. That's awful proud, a lot of pride that you would just demand that she sees things from your point of view. She's not going to probably. But I still love her more than that, so I should be able to say, she's not getting it, that's fine, move on with our lives. I still love this person. And that's in the marriage, and this is someone who's not married, but I would want to bring that into a relationship if I were married. To understand that she deserves that kind of treatment that I can't hold those things against her if she don't see things like I do outside of that I can't hold it against you if you don't see things like I do that makes no sense we can we can I could put my arm around you and try to show you how I see things but I don't have to be strangling you at the same time if you don't because we're different people you don't have to see things like I do I can try to help you into it if I really believe that I'm right but that's not love to beating you over the head with that that's a lot of pride on my part to say you better see things the way I see it as a boss I don't expect people to I very seldom get to the point where I'm like you just need to do this whether or not you want to I have because it does need to get done and maybe they're wanting to be lazy but other than that it's please and thank you and I ask them to and they respect that a lot. So I have very seldom got problems with people doing what I ask them to do. Even if they don't want to do it. They know that I'll work. And they know that I respect them. So they'll do it. And uh, that's the kind of environment that I, I, I think God has helped us build at that place. Is because we do respect them. We don't treat them disrespectfully. Like they're employees and we're the bosses. And you better do it this way. There are rules. You have to do certain things this way. But we do them too. And they see us following the rules. They see us being the examples and treating them right. And so all of that, we don't need to be upset with people for not seeing things our way. The love of God in our lives should help us to overlook people's flaws. 
And then the last thing, out the love of God and the kindness of God outshines ourselves. And what would our world be? What would our relationships be if we just simply thought, Jesse needs something. All right, what can I do to help him? What could I give to help his need? Instead of, well, how much do I care about Jesse? Do I really want to part with this? Do I really? Instead of that, just Jesse's got a need. What can I do to give? Nate's got a need. What can I do to give? What can I do to help that person? If we would just be those kinds of people who are the love of God was in our hearts, that we just looked at them and, and have a willingness to sacrifice from ourselves for their sake, what kind of a better relationship would we have? A better world would we have if people just didn't always think about themselves? And we've got a great example of somebody not thinking of themselves <laughs> and the Lord Jesus Christ. I heard it this morning. I don't know where, where. It was in the reading, I think, where Jesus was talking about this cup passing from him. But for this reason, I came to this hour. Uh, something along those lines I can't think. but it was for that reason that he endured everything up until that point when he was in the garden and it was for that reason he came so it wouldn't have made sense for him to say no even though you know he wanted to reject that and to go another way if there was any other way he wanted if this cup could pass let it pass but nevertheless not my will but thine be done he said and he was going to give up way more than any of us are ever being asked to give up. And he said, not my will, but God's. And we can't say, not my will, but thine, in the littlest things. A little bit of time, a little bit of money, a little bit of effort for somebody's sake. And we just have such a hard time saying, nevertheless, not my will. We, and, and we're so selfish. I'm that way. And, and I just hope that God, I desire for God to help me with that, to not be selfish the way that I am with my time uh, like I said I, I if if I know I'm supposed to be to work five to three o'clock five in the morning to three o'clock I'm fine with that I'll endure you get to me at 305 and I'm still there <laughs> my Christian testimony starting to slowly dwindle down because what am I still doing here five minutes after I should have been gone when I just gave you all that time I'm only kidding about that in the secular work environment. You know, I tried not to be disrespectful to him. I didn't say anything to him. I just went on it, placed uh, something in front of him that he needed, and just walked out. I didn't even, you know, maybe I should have, I did say hi. That was all that was, hi, here you go. And I was gone. But I um, did ask him how his day was and all that kind of stuff. But if we love like God loves, we'll be willing. And May God help me in that area of my life. I think that's one of the worst ways that I'm selfish is my time. If, if I know I'm supposed to give six hours, I'm willing to. If that's what you're asking for, I'm willing to. But it's hard for me to give beyond that if my mind says that's my time to go do something else that I would like to do. So that's just me expressing one of my faults that uh, I need to improve on is just being willing. You know what, whatever else, unless it's a real need, if it's just taking it easy somewhere or whatever, I need to be willing to sacrifice that for that other person. If I love, let God love. And so let us do that. It outshines self. So it originates with love for God. We need to cultivate our love for God. Be in His Word, remembering and seeing and always, every day, looking into how much He loves us. Understanding and asking Him to help us understand more. Just exactly what it was when He died on the cross. All that that meant. The author of life giving up His life created life and now he's dying that's pretty extreme the god of heaven he he owns heaven he created it created it all and he's the king of it and he gave all that to come down and die on this barren earth that hates him gave up all dignity as was said 
and that love that he has for us and we can't love people even a little bit even in the little things if we were seeing how much he loved us that would help us love others overlook their flaws it's not all there is to that person a little kid a little hyper kid or a rebellious teenager that's not all there is to that person there's a person in there an adult in there that with love and understanding and patience can become an adult who's serving and loving the Lord and a member of our church that's, that's working and, and, and being a productive member of our church serving God and helping to glorify God with just that testimony alone knowing that they were that wild as a child but people were showing them patience and they grew up and now to honor God with their lives so we see that, that's one thing that's not all there is to that person that's not all there is to that kid to that teenager, to that person an adult in our life that's going through something where they just don't understand what they're doing or maybe they are on purpose doing things that's not all there is to that person be willing to be patient with them and by love draw them back unto the Lord Jesus Christ that's not to say be soft and allow things that we shouldn't allow but not to just throw that person away throw all the time and relationship with that person out doesn't even matter anymore I want nothing to do with you Jesse you took my parking spot and 20 years from now there's going to be so much back and forth that I just can't even stand aside of you and it all started because you took my parking spot or what and you did it on purpose too you were laughing when you got out of the car <laughs> and I just hated you for that and then I just let it become such a thing overlook each other's flaws you know because God did that for us how proud are we that we don't understand that God overlooked at least a little bit and I say at least a little bit it was an awful lot that God overlooked with us when we accepted Lord Jesus Christ and he saved us an awful lot doesn't even cover it I don't think our English language could articulate what God forgave when he forgave us and we can't forgive the little things like the story of the man who was forgiven grand amount and I've heard it compared to what what the Bible says how many shekels that man owed I think it's in Luke chapter 18 and what he owed and the king forgave him because he just couldn't do it the I, I think it was in the hundreds of thousands is what I had heard but that's irrelevant it was a grand amount of money it was more than he could ever pay and he went out after being forgiven that and he beat a man who owed him the equivalent of 20 bucks beat him for that 20 dollars and he was thrown in jail by that king saying you were forgiven so much but you could not forgive a little and how are we going to be forgiven so much and not be willing to forgive others for their little things it's because we're so stuck on ourselves we forget that we ourselves are unworthy of the mercy and grace of God and so if God shown that to me I can show that to brother Jesse for taking my parking spot so all of that I'm just teasing a little bit but the other the point is there overlook each other's flaws man we're, we're serving Jesus together and that's important for our church going forward there's different personalities there's different levels of understanding and maturity what if you get somebody who's just really immature and loves to goof around all the time and they don't take things seriously we still got to go forward together with that person and building this church God sent them into this church they're still part of us and then all levels of different things that they could be doing just struggling with the sin of gossip and they just they, they just they love to do that we still love that person we still need to go forward for the cause of Christ with that person God forgave us an awful lot we can't still love that person it's pretty hard even as I say that to understand fully for us to truly grasp that that we would love somebody who's intentionally hurting us but God wants us to we look at King Saul and David Saul was hunting his life and God gave David the kind of love to overlook that and say he's my king and I love him and twice I believe it was twice he had the opportunity to kill King Saul and nobody would have blamed him he probably would have been right to do so but for his love for God and for his love for Saul 
He did it. And so we have been forgiven much. God has overlooked much. Let us show the kindness of God unto one another. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for this time that we have. Lord, I just pray that you be with each one of us as we consider this, Lord. If this church grows, Lord, that means that people will come in, Lord, with these personalities and these flaws and these errors in their lives. They're not going to be perfect, just like we are. not And God, even the ones that are here already, God, just help us to have the wisdom and the love that comes from you to understand, Lord.